Hi everyone, Jan Fursden here from Fursden House. I have a very special journal that I'd like to share with you today. This is a um, special order for my lovely friend Christine. And this is special because Christine and I basically collaborated together on this. Um, she bought one of my very first journals that I ever sold. That was sometime late last year, I believe. And the name of that journal was Miss Ella Barton. And it had a picture, an actual um, cabinet card picture of her. And she contacted me uh, a month or so ago and said that she had finished that diary and she was so sad she wanted she didn't want it to finish and that's when she told me that she'd like me to do another one and what she does is she creates short stories around the journal so last year she created stories around Ella Barton and this year she asked me to create one for um, Etta Place and I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with her. Um, I'm, I know a lot more about her now than I did. But Etta Place, uh, was. there's very little known about her other than her primary uh, association with um, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And yes, there was a movie, I think it was back in the 80s, with Paul Newman and Robert Redford and Catherine Ross. Um, <laughs> I remember seeing that, so it's kind of neat that I'm coming back here and creating a journal for it. But this journal, as I said, is about Etta Place, and it might be what happens is that uh, Etta Place's great-granddaughter, you never know, we don't know that much about her, uh, her great-granddaughter may have found this diary, and so that's, that's just one of the possibilities, but that's in Christine's department. My department was to do the easy stuff and just come up with a journal. So, um, as I said, it is a special order. And I'll go ahead and start with the um, the uh, dimensions and everything. It's six and a quarter inches wide by eight and a half inches long. It's about two inches thick, and it has two signatures. Um, I've tried to keep it as old looking as possible. That was my goal, uh, and it became quite a challenge because when you're trying to create something old, you can't use things like Tim Holtz little paper clips and you know things like that and then I would find myself looking at something I'd printed off the internet for an advertisement from 1904, 1890, something like that and then they have a dot com address on the bottom of it so it really got to be quite an interesting uh, game but I think I've got all the little glitches worked out so we're going to go ahead and open it and there you see the it is two signatures and there's the reverse and I've just got it tied together because, again, you don't want the, the neat little um, hooks and closures and stuff that we always come up with. Because, again, hello, <laughs> they didn't exist back then. So, what I've done, I've taken a, a vintage piece of um, crocheted lace, put it around the spine, and then I've just tied it together with this piece of muslin that I got from my friend uh, Annette at Boho Provision Company. Thank you, Annette perfect for it. Um, so let's go ahead and open it up. Now again, the idea is that it's supposed to look old and, and so on and so forth. So uh, as a matter of fact, Christine gave me a couple of items to put into it that she had and I thought that was fantastic. And this is one of them. This uh, lace pocket that I've created here is about 100 years old and it's just gorgeous. And I reinforced it with cardstock underneath so that it wouldn't rip. And inside there I have a, uh, a rose. I, I've had this rose for years and years. I saved it for some reason. Didn't write why I saved it. So I thought, well, now's the time to use it. And I think there's also a four-leaf clover in there, but it's it's for my own personal um, stash, if you will. And again, I, I thought, well, it just keeps laying around and laying around, and I just simply do not remember what it was for, so that's that. And then here is... A photograph of both, um, this is Sundance Kid, this is, um, his name was Harry Alonzo Longabau, and Etta Place and he were um, married, uh, they think around the 1904, 1902, somewhere in there. As I said, very little is known about her. Uh, and there are only two photographs of her that are uh, specifically authenticated as being her and one of them is very difficult to even look at and I'll show you that later uh, but you can barely tell it's her but this is this is the Sundance Kid that's his actual photograph and that is at a place and I've just put um, a couple of things I had this really nice uh, advertisement on the back from a photographer in Chattanooga Tennessee and then I was reading about her and well that photograph was taken in New York City at the DeYoung portrait studio so I thought well great 
And of course, I couldn't find any advertisement for that online uh, for that time frame. So I literally just typed this up and then just put it on the back. So it says De Young Portrait Studio, Union Square, Broadway, New York City, New York, 1901. That's when that photograph was taken. And there we go. And then here is literally just a um, some of the historical information that I got about her. And I, I'm not going to read it. It's very fine print. I, I did it so that it was... I love this print. It's difficult to read, but it looks beautiful. And I thought, well, I'm just going to go with it. But that's just a little bit of um, historical information where I got my information from. I'm going to put that down in there. And here you'll see bits and pieces of fabric and lace that Etta may have saved. Um, she supposedly came from a moneyed background. Um... So she would have had fine things, but apparently she gave that all up for uh, Harry Longabell. So this is just a lace flip that I've used, and that probably came off of a gown that she had. That's, that's my story. <laughs> Here we have a vintage piece of girl green ribbon and a little um, cameo that I've had and kept it for ages and ages. It was really neat because everything just sort of came together with this. And here we have an old, um, it says birthday greetings, and it was from the 1910, 19, I want to say 1910, 198, somewhere in there. It's really neat because it's raised. This is an original, by the way, it's, it's a uh, postcard photograph, or postcard greeting card, and just gorgeous, because that, that is raised, and it's just so pretty. And then here we have, um... In 1904, they made a trip to New York City where the, um, uh, the, what was it called, the, I'll get it out in a minute, the St. Louis World Fair had moved some exhibitions there, and this was open, and it was on Coney Island, and these are original, uh, not original themselves, but um, these are the actual pictures of the Coney Island uh, exhibits there, and these are just journal cards. You all know I love to write, so I like to have lots of space to write. Put that in there. And then here we have an old advertisement. This is a, a reproduction of an old advertisement for clothing manufacturers. And this is a piece of fabric advertisement. Um, Chicago McVitter McVickers Theater Building. And it's just uh, stained paper on the reverse. Again, more journal space. Here we have some sari silk that uh, I just made a little accordion thing thing for it. <laughs> this is one of my um, dried flowers that, I, or pressed flowers that I use. This is passion flower. It's also known as the mock apricot. And this is a card that I had that um, it's actually in Germany. Um, but we don't know if they made it over there or not. And the really neat thing about being an artist is you take artistic license. And the idea is you don't necessarily go with the probable. You go with the possibilities of what could have happened. So it's, it's nice to be able to have a little artistic license in there. This is a little uh, glassine bag that I've just stained. and I didn't stain it, I'm sorry. Uh, this is from our friend Rennell. I love these little cards. And I've just put a little vintage button on the bottom of it to give it a little bit of zing. So thank you, Rennell. I, I'm using all of the things that I purchased from you. They're just, I love them. And let's see here. This, uh, this is a pocket. Again, from one of her fancy dresses, perhaps, when she was younger. And this is an original page from a, um, what do you call it, a, a, a yearbook from 1910... No, I'm sorry, 1911 and 1912, I believe is what it was. And we don't know who she is. It's not at a place. But I love that when I came across uh, what it said underneath, that's when I said, okay, that one's got to go. And it, she, it says, oh, woman, lovely woman, nature made thee to temper man. And I thought, well, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> and they're the officers of the class and the senior class. But that is an original from the, uh, the scrapbook. I purchased it years and years ago and... I'm slowly using it up. 
This is just a bit of lace from another outfit she probably wore and vintage buttons. Again, we just don't know where they all came from. This is um, sort of like a little receipt. And those are just, uh, these are originals that I had. I think those came from my grandmother. She had a, a little receipt booklet thing that she gave me. And this is a playbill for the, um, the theater Hands Across the Sea. And again, it's just more space to write on. And this card here is also an original. This is the uh, Tosian, I believe is how it's pronounced. Um, it's an, an animal, I believe it's from South America or perhaps Africa. I can't quite remember which one. But it's in essence, it's a long-eared uh, fox. It's in the fox family. And that is uh, an original advertisement, uh, copyright 1890 by the Arbuckle Brothers Coffee Company. And again, I got that from a scrapbook that I'd purchased some time ago and took it all apart. I mean, it was, it was falling apart, the scrapbook itself, but I was able to salvage a lot of the things that had been pasted in there. And this is one of those pieces. And here we have... <laughs> South, uh, the state of North Carolina and the state of Florida, 25 cents and 75 cents. Those are reproductions. Christine provided those, and I just, I think they're so cool. She got them at um, a shop, I think it's called the Jesse James Gift Shop. And here, this came from a, a reproduction of the old Sears catalog. And so, naturally, Etta would have torn out pages that she was particularly interested in, and of course she was going to be interested in guns. Why not? Then you know she was part of their team. The the uh, gang that at that time with the Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid, uh, what were they called? The uh, now naturally I go blank. But anyway, I'll, I'll put it down below. Interestingly enough, though, here's an advertisement for Qatar Qatar Cure, and it is said that um, Harry Longabau had Qatar. So it's like yes, that's got to go in. So again, it's just really neat how it all kind of comes together and stuff. So let me pop that back in there if, it, if I can do it easily. If I can, I'll just put it in later. No, nope, it's not going to go, so we'll just keep right on going. This is uh, another um, that I've just created a card, Coney Island, 1904. And that's when they visited there. And again, another advertisement. A long way from what we have today. It was really neat. And again, that's from the um, reproduction of the Sears and uh, Roebuck catalog. I remember everyone used to buy everything from Sears. And this is just a bit of uh, jewelry finding that was probably came off a necklace of hers or perhaps an earring. We don't know. And some more fabric and lace from one of her outfits. Vintage buttons up here. This, oh, this is wonderful. I'm going to take this off, and I'm not going to try and put it back together. Again, you know, I, I thought, well, I'll just Velcro it down. Well, yeah, like they had Velcro back then. So, I thought, well, I've got these little tiny safety pins, which they did have back then. And this is what uh, Christine provided me with. So, I've just made a little envelope out of some old lace that I've dyed. And inside, it's so pretty. It's so fine. I want to make sure you get the their gloves. Here we go. Here's the end. I'll, upside down. But those are gloves. They don't have the fingers in them. And just the finest lace. We don't know how old they are. Or I don't. But Christine wanted those included. And it was my pleasure to do so. And it was also my pleasure just to see them. I'm going to put those there. Because to get it fastened is a bit tricky. But again, couldn't use, uh, you know, they had sewing machines back then and they had safety pins, but they did not have Velcro and, and all that fun stuff. Over here, this is also supplied by Christine. It's just an old piece of jewelry. Beautiful. Uh, looks like it's hand-painted. Feels like it as well. It's uh, of flowers. And it was just perfect sitting there. This is just some plain paper there. And this is an original piece from... Again, that, um, that yearbook that I had, the famous Bach Choir at Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And you can use the back for journaling space if you'd like. That's what I would do with it. It is an original, but it still needs to be used. There we 
we go. All right. Another piece of uh, cloth that came probably from one of her dresses. And some more money. <laughs> I like this one, of course. Being from, not from Alabama, but lived here long enough to claim it. The state of Alabama, $100. And these are reproductions. And here's uh, Confederate States of America, $500. Which at the time was probably worth about three cents due to the economy failing and everything. And that's a pocket. That, some of these are actually a double pocket because I did put some um, cardstock on the back. And so that created two pockets inside, in front of the cardstock, behind the fabric, and then again behind that. And this is just a plain piece of paper. I'm not even going to bring it out. You know what paper looks like. I, uh, in some of my research, I found where they would use um, black and white gingham. And it just so happened I had a black and white gingham uh, ribbon, so I had to include some of that. And that's an, a vintage glass button. Amazing that they were making them so beautiful back then. This is another piece that I've had for years and years, and it just I kept looking at it and never used it. And here it is. It's making its debut finally. I bought it at least 30 years ago. They're real flowers, and they're inside a, a film you, you peel off the back and, it, and it's very sticky so you place it down on there but the the flowers are inside uh, encased in this piece of plastic or whatever it's kind of hard to explain but there it is so it finally got to make its debut out there this is just a fabric rose here we have a little um, fabric snippet this is from a, a snippet roll that I created and um, or not a roll but um, just pieces like that, and I just I think they're lovely, old lace, vintage lace. So here's the second picture. It's uh, as I said, only two pictures are known to exist of at a place that can definitely be traced to her, and this is the second one. It, it actually included a picture of um, oh, on this side of a uh, Butch Cassidy, but this is not about Butch Cassidy. It's about Harry Longabow and at a place, and there's Harry, the Sundance Kid. And there is at a place. And again, you can see it's very difficult to tell that that is her, but those are considered the two pictures of her. Some more lace from another um, outfit that she had. This is a little pocket I created using some, um, what do you call it? I can't even think of the name of it now. Not, ac not acetate, but um, I put inside, this is an original. And it's very, very delicate. It uh, is a calling card. And this calling card is from Lena Matthews. So we don't know who Lena is. Uh, but, you know, obviously she, she knew at a place, at least in our life, <laughs> in this video presentation, she knew her. So, and I've, again, I just put a little bit of lace on the top to help get that out of there without having difficulty. Okay. This is, um, again, from that scrapbook that I purchased that was falling apart. It's an old advertisement. It's uh, Bastine's Pure Flavors. I believe what it is is um, uh, extracts. You know, like we have vanilla extract and what have you, and, and this was... So that is an original as well. Circa... Um, the, the scrapbook was between 1890 and 1910, uh, so it spans several years. So I went ahead and used that. Also, this piece came from there beautiful little spray of flowers. It's an original. This is something that I got off of the um, the uh, internet and it's Coney Island's Funny Place. Gives you attractions and stuff and they visited Coney Island. That is recorded about 1904 and um, so that's why I was able to get that. I thought wow perfect and here we have this is a reproduction advertisement. There's not really any space to write on it. There is on this if you want to but on this one it's just information and it's the carbolic smoke ball and it would positively cure coughs, colds, catarrh, asthma, bronchitis, hoarseness, loss of voice, throat deafness, I'm not sure what throat deafness is, but anyway, sore throat, influenza, hay fever, snoring, croup, whooping cough, neuralgia, and headache. Now I'm telling you that is a miracle piece of medicine. Um, I wouldn't bet that it worked, but it was probably loaded with alcohol, but it just so happened that it is known that um, Harry Longabout did have catarrh. Which is, if I remember correctly, that is an inflammation with a lot of mucus uh, in the throat and um, 
It's sort of like an upper respiratory disease, what we have now. So that's what that is. And, oh, I forgot to show you. Hello. This, it's in the middle of the two signatures. This is Sari Ribbon. Sorry, silk rather, and I've just put a key on it, but this is to use as a um, a bookmark. I just saw it laying there and realized, oh, I hadn't talked about that. Here we have, this is in Europe, this is in the French Alps, and we don't know that she didn't go there. We can't prove that she did or didn't. So, and this is actually a hospital in the French Alps. And it's a postcard, it's an original. And then here we have a, an original dictionary page from a French dictionary. So it makes sense that it would go in there with this. And this is also a double pocket. Not easy to just sleep in, especially online or on video, naturally. But there that is. And this is just a little lace, piece of lace um, that came off of a collar. You can see where it's torn. So I wanted to include that. This is another one of those original pieces from the scrapbook, 1890 to 1910. Beautiful graphics. that They just had phenomenal graphics back then. You know, we have great graphics now, but we've got computers that generate it so easily. And back then, it was done by hand, and it was just so much more involved. So it was much more of a, a really miracle in many respects. Here is just some old uh, original um, advertisement. It was actually on a what was it a part of a someone had purchased something let's see Rutgers Petersburg Virginia a footstool and so this came as part of the cover so I just put those on there for fun and here we have I've started including some of these with my journals especially ones like this that are kind of chunky it's just a plain heavy board and it's easy to use uh, when you have something to write on, say you want to write on this page, well, it's going to be difficult with all this, so you just literally put the board there, and then just write on the page, and then that way it doesn't break through the paper or anything like that. But that's that piece, and then here, we're not sure where these came from. They are um, encased in uh, wax paper, that's what it is, I could not think of it, wax paper. It's a dried flower of some kind in there, and it is sealed in. And here we have, this is a um, an old bit of embroidery, a glass uh, antique pin, or button, I'm sorry, an antique glass button. I'll get it out in a minute. And in here we have a piece of denim that is old and faded and ripped, and we're not sure where that came from, but why would Etta save it? So, I'm thinking maybe it belonged to Harry Longabell. And here are some um, reproductions of the Wanted poster, the Sundance Kid. And this just says Longbow, and then in other areas it's Longabow, L-O-N-G-A-B-A-U-G-H. So, again, you can write on the reverse of that, Christine. And here we have... And I tore them deliberately because, well, after all, they are very old. But there it is. This is Butch Cassidy. That's the Sundance Kid. $5,000 reward for both of them. At one point, the reward actually got up to $30,000, if I remember correctly. They were quite... Uh, the Wild Gang. That's, that's the gang they belonged to. I knew it would come to me. And these are reproductions from the Pinkerton National Detective Agency. Uh, the Pinkerton stayed on them and stayed on them. And um, they never identified exactly um, when they were killed. They think they know, but they never 100% uh, identified the bodies. So it's it's a mystery, and if you watch the movie, you'll see a, a different ending, which still leaves everything nice and up in the air so that people like me can just form all kinds of cool stuff, ideas and things about what really happened. But that's just information from the Pinkerton Agency. So that is it. Um, Christine, it has been an absolute delight doing this for you. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I never even thought about doing something like this, and I thought, what a neat idea. As soon as she sold me, I was sold. It was like, oh yes, well of course I'll do a special order for you, because with that kind of a neat idea, of course. So I do hope you enjoy it. I thoroughly enjoyed doing it for you, and um, I, I hope you enjoy it. If not, 
you can send it back to me and I'll use it myself. So that's it for now, folks. Thank you very much for your patience. And if you have any questions or anything, feel free to give me a call or give me a call. <laughs> Put the question down below in the comment section. Take care and have a blessed week. Bye-bye.